Hello everyone, uh, both the people here in the room and those of you who are watching or who will eventually be watching uh, online. Uh, <laughs> some feedback on the sound here. So uh, my name is Rasmus Olme and I'm the head of the dance and choreography program here. Uh, and uh, this info evening is just to, um, well, for us to get a chance to present the program to people who might be interested in applying. And uh, for, um, uh, of course, the people in the room here and also people who will be watching online to ask some questions. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, you can just write them uh, in the chat and uh, someone will uh, read them either at the end or as they come along. We'll see how we solve it best. All right, so... Um, I have a few talking points that I will uh, take us through. And um, most, uh, one of the most important thing uh, is, of course, that uh, we are starting a new campus in Holstebro. So for those who don't know the process behind this, it was a political decision uh, that was taken about a year and a half ago, uh, where the uh, Danish uh, parliament um, agreed on uh, as part of a larger decentralization plan of moving a lot of educations away from the capital out to different parts uh, of the country. And uh, uh, the dance education was one of the involved uh, educations, which means that uh, uh, we will be opening up a new campus in uh, Hostelbo. And um, next to the dance, uh, there is also going to to be a music program there. Uh, so that's from the um, Royal Academy of Music uh, South in Jotland that are um, uh, opening up uh, new programs there as well. So uh, eventually those, uh, uh, there will be a, a new building that will house both the dance and choreography program and the new uh, uh, programs in music. But uh, the new building is not going to be ready already this fall, so uh, we're, we will be in temporary, temporary location first until we move into the new building. Uh, but um, so uh, it's, uh, it's a big step also for us, it's going to be something new. Uh, so uh, there is also a lot of, uh, um, it's, a, it's a new situation for us to, to relate to as well. So um, uh, it also means that there will be some new staff that will start in Holstebro uh, that are not uh, in place yet. Uh, so, um, uh, but of course, the, I mean, uh, I will be running as the head of that program as well. So I'm perfectly able to answer questions and so, but it will not be uh, me who's be, who will be the head of program in Holstebro. So uh, this means that now we will have uh, one study plan of dance and choreography, but we will, it will be taking place in two different cities. Uh, so here in Copenhagen and in Hossobo. So here in Copenhagen, we currently have a, a second year uh, and they will be then doing their third year uh, here uh, next year. Now, how these two programs uh, uh, will collaborate and so, and what kind of bridges that will be possible. It's all to, to find out as we start up. Uh, but that's of course something we, we are really eager and willing uh, to do. So what kind of collaborations we can have between the, 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 um, the programs in the two different cities and so on. Now, uh, we are working, the ambition um, is from the school side, uh, to maintain uh, um, the education also in, uh, in Copenhagen. It's, there are still things that need to be confirmed around that. Uh, so it hasn't been, uh, the final decision is not made, but it's the ambition of the school. Um, and uh, how then this will work with uh, when we will audition for which program in which city is also still to be confirmed because it will depend a little bit on the timeline also of the, the new building and, uh, and some other things. So uh, I won't be able to answer that more clearly than saying that it's still to be confirmed. 
Now, um, this ambition that we have of maintaining the uh, dance education in the two cities means that um, we are then planning to focus the two uh, 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 programs a little bit differently. And uh, the idea is that, uh, in a way, one could think that uh, there is only one professional dance education or higher education on BA level in, in Denmark. And uh, the, the fact of having it uh, in two cities also gives us the possibility to maybe uh, broaden a little bit uh, and to not have the exact same focus. So, uh, in dance uh, and choreography, there is quite a broad spectra of, of places one could work as a dancer and different interests among dancers uh, for their careers. So, um, the freelance scene, uh, the independent scene of, uh, that uh, a lot of times uh, also includes a lot of uh, shorter projects, uh, collective works, uh, where also people might uh, migrate between different roles. Like one, they will be dancing in one project, but then they'll be choreographing another project and then maybe involved in a more collective production. And so sort of the, the, where the role between a dancer and a choreographer can be very fluid. While there are more sort of ensemble-based work <clears throat> or companies or also choreographers, independent choreographers that more work in that way where there is a choreographer and they continue, pro continuously produce work with dancers and who might be collaborating with them for 10 years or maybe just one, one project. But where the role of dancer-choreographer uh, is, is less, let's say, fluid. Um, so... Um, our plan is thus to uh, focus the program in Holstebro more towards the sort of uh, uh, ensemble dancer, rep repertory company dancer, uh, and to then gear the Copenhagen program a bit more towards you know, what, what is usually called dance maker. Uh, so the maker role being somewhere in between there, you know. So not necessarily saying that uh, it's someone who... Uh, aims to only work as a choreographer, but in that more gray zone, let's say. That being said, you know, this is a way for us to try to uh, meet a sort of a larger part of the um, uh, professional field, to educate for a larger part of the professional field. But of course, uh, lots of things can happen uh, while you study, you can have one idea when you start and you can change your mind later. So it's not to say like, if you do this education, you will end up doing this or that, no? Just like now, the education we have now, uh, some people will go more towards the independent scene, others will go more towards that ensemble. So right now we're housing that inside the same program. And it's not that it's like absolutely tight division between the two programs uh, eventually. But we want to use the opportunity to sort of diversify a little bit to be able to reach a bit uh, of a larger part of the professional field. So that's why we're planning, uh, or why we have this ambition. So um, they're both still running under the same study plan, like I mentioned. And I wanted to say something about uh, the, the fact that the program is called Dance and Choreography. Because um, when the BA, uh, when, we, when Bachelor in Dance and Choreography got its uh, form that it has now, which was in uh, 2017, if I remember right, I'm looking at my colleague here, yeah. Um, it was called Dance and Choreography. Previously, when it was a four-year education, it was a dance education, but with the, the possibility to specialize in choreography the last two years, uh, but that specialization was only open for two students and it was only open for students who were already in the program. You couldn't apply uh, only as a choreography uh, education from outside. So in a way, the three-year program then included both of those, to not have like a specialization, but to say, okay, also to respond to maybe more this, what I call the dance maker, that we can see that in the professional field, people jump quite a lot between those different roles and we don't want to insist on that separation. Uh, 
So how then, uh, that was the reason why it was um, called dance and choreography. But it's also to say, it's not, it's like, it's two subjects, it's dance and choreography. It's not dancer and choreographer, so it's not an identity. It's two subjects that are being studied, and they're studied in relation to each other. And uh, sometimes uh, <clears throat> you can be um, taking the same, almost the same workshop, the same content of a workshop or a class, but you can choose to focus more on dance or you can choose to focus more on choreography. So a lot of times it's also like, where is the focus inside the work? The same class could be taught as a choreography class or it could be taught as a dance class, depending on which perspective of the work that you're focusing on. So that's why we wanted to include the, 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 the term choreography also. And of course, it's also to say that the, you know, before I mentioned this uh, professional field and the, the ensemble dancer, but the ensemble dancer uh, of, of today is also not just like a, a dancer in the sense of the one who's only executing the steps that the choreographer made. So the ensemble dancer is also someone that is expected to be able to create their own material and to come up with ideas and not just you know, respond to an idea, but actually produce ideas and be engaged in the creation process and not just the one who's executing it at the end, in the end. No? So therefore, when I before uh, mentioned these uh, uh, different focuses, once again, it's not that uh, there are gray zones in there as well. So an ensemble dancer is expected to have um, um, compositional understanding, choreographic tools and creativity, improvisational skills. So not just uh, sort of what might be you know, considered as more just say conventional dance skills, but also creative skills. I think that's needed today in an, in an ensemble work. So. Uh, so that's also why dance and choreography is still, uh, I mean, that the term choreography is definitely still um, uh, relevant in both of the programs. And it is this sort of, um, I sometimes, um, when, I, when I make this kind of presentation about the program, and it's called dance and choreography, I want to say that it's not dance, and choreography, but it's the dance and choreography, like the, the place where they are together rather than two different things. So, you know, these Venn diagrams of circles that sort of overlap each other, there is a place that is where they are both together. And then maybe you can move in between here. So that's, that has been the vision of this program ever since it started, and, and that vision remains also uh, uh, in, the, in the version that uh, we are having admissions for now in Holstebro. So um, then I wanted to say something about um, the, the study plan or the curriculum. So uh, there are uh, a couple of major categories. So there's what we call subject modules, which is you know, the basic subjects that we're studying, meaning dance and choreography. They are not only called that. The dance module has a longer title. It's called dance body movement. Uh, and then the choreography modules are called choreography. Uh, the reason we call it dance body movement is because uh, some of the classes are not specifically dance, like it, it's studied in relation to dance, but uh, w it can happen that uh, you get uh, classes from martial arts or uh, you know, some more uh, somatic uh, input that are not made specifically for dance, but that are studied in relation to dance. So that's why we we uh, uh, made this sort of larger category of dance body movement. It also means that we haven't specified specific techniques in the uh, study plan. It doesn't say uh, you know, contemporary or ballet, but all of them are considered as different ways, different techniques that study dance body and movement. So the curriculum is not constructed through a specific amount of classes of this technique and a specific amount of classes of another technique. This also gives us the possibility to be a bit flexible 
depending on the group that's there. So maybe one year, uh, because the group is also asking for more a certain kind of work, we can adapt to that because it can all house inside those larger categories. And one group uh, might not have the same needs as the previous group. So we don't know if it's best to have a lot of uh, somatic in the second semester or in the fourth semester. Or, so that depends a little bit on the, on the group and, and this sort of open categories allows us to adapt. So that's the, the, and like I said, dance and choreography sometimes can be very, they can be easily confused with each other. So when it says in the, in the study plan, like this is a, a dance body movement workshop, or this is a choreography workshop, in content they can be quite similar, but the focus on what we're working on can, can be different. Um, so that's the largest part, the, the subject modules of dance and choreography that run throughout the whole um, study plan. Then, and I should say that the study plan is currently being revised, but the, the, the new version is not just uh, in place. So there are some changes that might come, but they are not radical. So what I'm presenting now is still valid, but it might change a little bit in, in scale or size of, of different modules. And this is something that happens, uh, uh, the revision of the study plan happens every third year. And uh, it's, it's going on now with all the bachelor educations here at the, at the school. So it's not just the dance and choreography that's being reviewed. Um, so that was the, what we call subject module. Then we have something that we call uh, project modules. Uh, and um, there we have something called independent project. So this is, uh, in fact, what it's preparing the student for their final graduation work. Because in the third year, there is a kind of a large chunk, uh, uh, sort of a four, uh, well, well, half a semester that is dedicated to the individual graduation project, the bachelor project. So these independent projects are there to prepare the student um, to, uh, for the graduation project. That means that they're introduced to some um, entrepreneurship, uh, uh, you know, process planning, uh, how to make a, a basic budget for the project, how to formulate the research question that you want to investigate on, uh, how to document uh, your process. So these kind of things that eventually are needed in the graduation project. The graduation project, like I said, that happens in the third year then, um, it has sort of three legs that it's standing on. One is a showing of a, some kind of artwork. Uh, one is a portfolio, so uh, written assignments, but also um, pictures, or it's uh, usually made uh, as a physical object, so it can be made out of different materials and so on, and different documentations of the process. And then there is also a verbal presentation of the process. Uh, so it's those three legs of uh, the, the bachelor project that the independent project during the education is preparing you as a student towards. Then we have something that uh, in this um, uh, version of the study plan is called subject related foundation or subject related studies. It might not be obvious what it means. So if the dance and choreography are the subject, this is what we think relates to the subject. So not the subject itself, but sort of neighboring fields of studies that can be of use. And uh, it can be different things. So here also there is some uh, uh, space some flexibility. But uh, it can include uh, dance history, performance studies, some uh, philosophical work. It can include uh, uh, some studies into visual arts, but it can also include um, some uh, pedagogics of how to teach dance. Or so it's uh, it's not the subject itself, but the the, the lo still looking at the subject through sort of the neighboring areas uh, uh, around. So that's the subject related. But it also includes sort of like how to study, 
how to make best use of uh, of the school what kind what facilities are there how do i handle some uh, basic lights and sound technique or these things no? so things you might need uh, as a professional but that is not the subject exactly itself then uh, there is also the performance project so every uh, year there is one sort of performance production which uh, is usually or has always been so far uh, made by an invited choreographer um, and uh, can vary uh, also here depending on uh, where the students are at and if there is one production in the first year that's more like this we will try to make another one that's more like that in the second year so that the different experiences of those productions are not too similar but that it can be different ways of working uh, or different aesthetics or one including something more theatrical and something else that is more compositional so uh, the the nature of those work can also vary quite a lot during the uh, three years. So, uh, did I miss something? I'm looking at my screen. I think that's it. So we had these major categories of the, the basic subjects, uh, the subject related, uh, the individual projects, and then the performance productions. And then I also already talked it through the, the, the BA project, the bachelor project, uh, which is the individual graduation. All right, um, the last thing that I wanted to talk through a little bit, although all of it is also available online, is um, the admissions, just to talk through what the, pres what, uh, the auditions here, what it, how it functions and what it looks like. So we have um, um, uh, this time around, we're doing it in two rounds. So the first round of auditions will be done uh, solely through video. Uh, and uh, the, there are four different tasks that are quite clearly described uh, in the application form or through the application guide uh, that is much easier to follow than if I try to explain it here. And there is also a video uh, of uh, me again uh, presenting those tasks uh, that is online as well. And then you can jump back and forth when, you know, he, uh, if anything is not clear. Um, so uh, previously, just to say something about the, the video auditions. Um, previously, uh, we have had three rounds of audition. And uh, we would then have done um, a first one that was possible to do either physically here at the school or uh, through video. And uh, the reason that that was always available through video was because it's quite short. And people that are interested in it but live on the other side of the world, it's a lot to ask to come here to spend an hour and a half in the studio. So for the, that first selection round was always possible to do on video. Then I think most of uh, uh, dance educations and other educations, well, of course, went through quite a shift during the pandemic because everything went online. Uh, and some we learned some things also there. And um, uh, one thing we also learned was uh, that uh, in a way it's more even that everyone auditions uh, uh, through video than rather than having someone through video and some other people in the space. So it's, a, it's, a, it's still with the, the purpose to facilitate, you know, that people don't have to travel here to, when the audition is not very long. But it's also an effort to sort of um, make an equal process for everyone applying. Now, what we did previously then was that we were after the first round, the second and the third were uh, back to back. So people would come here and they would do uh, first like a, a half a day uh, of auditions. And then the, there would be a selection. And if they would stay on for the last round, there would be two more days. So now we took some of the second and put it into the first, and some of the second and put it into the third. So that means that the video auditions we are asking for now, for the first round, are more extensive. We are asking for, for more things to see, because we want, now we don't get to meet, we want to be able to see more things. Uh, so 
um, some exercises, some uh, own improvisation, some choreographic work of your own choice, and some phrase material that you learn and, and send in. So that means we're only doing two rounds, but we're doing the same amount uh, somehow. And it also means that the, the third round before was only uh, two days, now it's three days instead. So we, we get to see everything that we would have seen in two rounds, but they're split up in a different way. And uh, the, um, the third round that will only take place physically, so, uh, unless there would be any specific reason, um, the, that one will happen in Holstable. Uh, so the, uh, the auditions will not take place here, but in there. Also to give the students a chance to see what place it is that they will be in and what the city looks like and so on. So the third round of physical auditions will take place in Holstowo. Um I want to say something about uh, the selection criteria, like what is it that we're looking at. So I'll just read them through and once again these are of course available online but sometimes it can be good to explain things because they're short. So clarity in understanding and executing movement. That's pretty straightforward. Um, then uh, ability to improvise. So having some uh, uh, ability to get uh, small information uh, and, and put it into a situation for yourself, which is not uh, prescribed before. Then something we call the ability to perform, which is more vague, uh, but it has to do, I think, about how you're able to sort of not just uh, you know, do the material, but to be in the situation of showing that material and being together with other people. So uh, performing is also performing together. Uh, so how, 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 that's, how one is experiencing that situation and how one mediates that experience of one's, of one's own experience of that situation. Uh, ability to work with concentration and incorporate feedback. So, uh, well, being able to focus on something, not having to spread uh, attention. And when w some specific feedback comes, that one is able to incorporate that. Uh, so getting a feedback and then being able to adjust to it. Uh, communicative and collaborative skills. Uh, I think one of sort of a hidden uh, skill for many dancers is group work because almost all the teaching happens in group. There is very little individual teaching. Uh, so this, this capacity to work inside a group and together with the people in the group, uh, although it's not something that is like described in the curriculum, I think it's between the lines uh, in all curricula uh, for all dance education, this uh, capacity to, 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 to function and make the group function and function yourself, find a way for yourself to function in that group. So that's the communicative and collaborative skills. So it's not necessarily collaborative in the sense like, are you going to make a, a piece together or so, but uh, making the situation work for you inside the group and for the group. Then we have something that uh, we call willingness and capacity to engage in complexity. Uh, we're very happy about that one. And it has to do with, I mean, uh, it is an arts education and we are moving in domains sometimes that are not obvious. Someone can give a, a very open task or a metaphor for something and, and it's the capacity to to get something, although it's not a clear instruction, but to make something out of it. So how to navigate in something that is uh, unknown and not feeling like, ah, oh, but tell me what to do. Or, you know, so how, do you cons how can you engage in something that is complex rather than, so you can't really get a, is it this or is it that? And it's more like, well, you have to see. You have to go there and see how it works for you. That's, that's what we mean, both with the willingness 
So to not feel like, mm, yeah, but also the capacity to do that. And then there's the last one that also needs a little bit more of unfolding maybe. Uh, it's readiness to assimilate uh, the program. And here it's more about uh, um, finding that, the, that we think that we can create uh, something for that student. Uh, so it's because it might sound a bit like you have to uh, be like us or you know this assimilation of coming into an environment and assimilate into it but it's it's just as much about our, our feeling that we have the capacity to to give you what we think you need so someone can come in with a lot of expertise and be great at something that we feel that we don't know how to help them with and then you think maybe they have a there is a better program for them so although you can check a lot of the boxes on the skills, it still also needs to match somehow uh, with the, the people and the faculty and us that are here working. So that's, that's what that uh, point means. Uh, and just a, a last thing here to clarify, because now I went through all the points, it also says each applicant need not necessarily possess all of the qualities mentioned above. Uh, the admission committee will make an overall assessment of the applicants based on the auditions in their entirety, in their selection. And the admission committee can take the coherence of the group into consideration. So uh, it's not that the, we are, these are the things that we are looking at, but it's not like a checking a box for each one, but in the end it will be a sort of overall uh, evaluation of all those criteria. The last thing there, the admission committee can take the coherence of the group into consideration. This is uh, about uh, you know, what kind of um, group dynamics uh, or how, how diverse is the group, how uh, similar is the group. And those are things that we don't know until we see the ones that are there. So. Uh, it is not a kind of instrumentalization of like, ah, oh, we need one like this and one like that. But in the end, whatever we have thought about the program, it will be the people that are in the program that are also part of defining it. So we are, when we are there in the end and making the selection, it's also to look at who's there and, and how, can, how can we make that work. Um, and in our experience uh, in this, it's not about trying to create a specific group dynamic because when we afterwards propose to people to be in that group or to come and join the school, they might also say no because they auditioned to something else. And then uh, we end up taking someone else who's on the reserve list. So it's not about this uh, uh, micromanagement of people's characters or group dynamics in that sense because, and also three years is a long time, so a lot of things can happen. We meet the, the applicants for a few days and of course we create some kind of idea about who, who you are, but we know very little. And things can happen to everyone during three years that anyway means that the group dynamics is going to be completely different in the second semester than in the fourth or, you know. So it's not, a, it's not micromanaging group dynamics, just to clarify. Okay. Um, I've gone through my talking points, and uh, so um, unless you think of something I forgot, Tiziana? I think you covered it all. Yeah. Questions will help. Yes. Fill in the gaps. Exactly. So, uh, <coughs> are there questions? Have you? Do you have some questions yes, there? Okay, maybe we can start with your questions there and then you can think about and you can add or maybe you wanted to ask anything that's already been asked and we'll see, okay? Perhaps there is a repetition, but I just... That's fine. And what I might do is that uh, I will repeat the question because I'm not sure if that it will be heard out if not. Uh, so. Hello, I'm from Greece and I wanted to ask if this program takes place in Copenhagen or only in Holstebro. Thank you for your time. Okay, so a question about... Uh, whether the program happens in, only in Copenhagen or in both places. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the talk, 
the current situation is that next year we will have uh, first year students in Hostel Rule and third year students in Copenhagen. The ambition of the school is to keep um, uh, dance education in both those places. It's not hasn't yet been finally confirmed, but the, um, that's the ambition. So I think the question was maybe answered earlier, but once again. And then is it possible to change from the Holsterbury program to the Copenhagen program after acceptance on either of them? So uh, I just repeat the question so that it gets to the microphone. Uh, if it's possible to change between uh, the programs in Copenhagen and Hostel uh, I would say that it's not impossible. Like, uh, uh, of course, it's unlikely that we will have auditions the same year for both programs, which means that uh, if you're in the first year, like now, you will be in the first year in Holstebrug, and there will be a third year in uh, Copenhagen. And then I guess it goes without saying, you cannot jump from the first year to the third year. So depending a little bit on the merits and where you are at in the education, and uh, it's, it's, it can be possible, but it's not something that is just uh, free of choice that one can jump in between because it will, it will need a, uh, some sort of evaluation. And depending on which student, which year, in which program and how it's possible to go. Will the physical dance training look the same in Holstebrew as in Copenhagen, or would there be a difference? So if there is a difference between the physical training in the two programs, it's not going to be exactly the same, because it might not be exactly the same, or I mean, it will not be exactly the same teachers. Uh, as I already described, there is a, a, an idea of, these, uh, uh, of broadening the spectra there and, and having these two different profiles. So that, of course, means that it's not exactly the same. It's also not absolutely uh, different. They are not going to be that far apart. But the fact of wanting to, that there will be not the same faculty in the two places uh, and that there is this different in focus, there will be some difference. But it also means that, uh, I mean, if uh, the faculty here in Copenhagen would all stop and there would be a new faculty inside the exact same program, of course that would also change a lot. So what I'm saying is that it's not just a question about uh, these different focus areas, but more about um, the faculty present and also the availabilities of, of teachers. Some teachers, for example, uh, you know, that we can uh, uh, employ in Copenhagen because they are here working, might not have the possibility to, uh, because they are combining it with other work at the same time, and they will not be able to do that uh, going back and forth to the hospital. So some practical things will definitely uh, mean that there will be differences as well. What kind of technical classes does the program offer? Contemporary ballet, jazz, etc.? Right, so uh, it's, the question is about what kind of techniques. And here I'm sort of purposely a little bit vague, and it has to do with what I said before about this dance body movement. We want to work with these larger categories rather than saying we have this technique, we have that technique. So there is not any specific technique that is excluded, but with that said, the focus here is contemporary dance. So even if we're taking ballet class, or if we're taking house class, or if we're taking uh, Aikido class, it's still with the purpose of studying towards a career in contemporary dance. Because sometimes I think that's also why we use these categories of body dance movement instead of ballet, because ballet can also, I mean, it's not for example, ballet as one thing. Ballet can be taught in so many different ways. So it's not really about uh, the technique itself. It's about the purpose of that technique and who's teaching it and what. So therefore, like I said, I remind a bit purposely vague and not saying there is this technique and that technique. But the focus all around is contemporary dance. Can't you hear me? OK. Um, OK. <laughs> Do students get grades through the education? If not, how do you measure their progress? 
good question. So how is the assessment being made? Um, this is also something that uh, we are looking into when the curricula is being revised, if we are uh, planning any other uh, ways of uh, exams and so on. But uh, right now, we are not making specific exams, like at the end of the semester, that you need to pass. There is a, a more of an overall evaluation on the person's active participation in the teaching. And the only uh, grades we have is pass-fail. So we don't have uh, uh, any more grades than that. Will the students in Holstebrew be strong technical dancers after the education? Yes. <laughs> the question was, will the students in Holstebrew be strong technical dancers? Yes, I mean, that's definitely our goal. And so it is with the, the program in, in Copenhagen. How do you assure the quality of the education during the changing of placement and program? How do we assure the quality of the education? Yeah, well, um, that's a very good question because, of course, we are moving into a new situation. I mean, we have a... Uh, it is our duty to fulfill the quality of, of the education and, and, and we will do our best to do so. Uh, of course, there will be... Now we're hiring someone who will be the head of the program in, in Holstebro, but all of the faculty uh, that are working here in Copenhagen are very engaged in this work. Uh, so uh, there's, it's not going to be only happening over there, there will be a, a close collaboration and, and we do have experience now from the, the last years here of running the BA. So um, uh, that's, uh, that's the challenge of course. But again, it's also our duty to make sure that that works. And of course, in terms of quality assurance, the program in Hostabu is going to follow the same kind of quality assurance that all the programs in the school is following. All the evaluations and everything, it's going to work just as all the other uh, programs work here. So in that sense, the quality assurance will be the same as in the other places. Is there an audition every year for the program? A question about if there is audition every year. That remains to be decided a bit. So far, we've always had auditions every second year. So we never had auditions every year. When it was a four-year program, uh, that meant that there was always two years because there would be a first and a third, and then a second and a fourth, and a first and a third. When it became a, a three-year education, we still only kept auditions every second year which meant that, uh, um, like, like it is now, this year we have a second year and only a second year. Next year, if we would have had auditions here in Copenhagen, it would have been again then a first and a third year. So they would always, you know, as how, how we've been running it so far, it's been a first and a third and then only a second and a first and a third. Now, as I said already, the, how this is going to work uh, in... in um, between Hostelbo and Copenhagen, it remains to be decided. But um, uh, we would not have auditions the same year for the two programs, as we have been planning now. Things can change, so it's also not written in stone. But yeah. Is there a criteria for how much dance experience you must have to start at the education? And is it possible to be accepted with dance experience from genres as hip-hop and house? So the question is if there's any specific expected uh, uh, dance experience to, uh, uh, to get in. And a question about uh, other uh, sort of house and, what was the other one? Uh, hip-hop and house. Hip-hop and house. So, uh, yes, that's perfectly possible. It's not the, like I said, I, I went through these admission criteria. Those are the things that we look at. So it's not tied to a specific uh, uh, technique. Uh, it, uh, but meeting those different criteria that I mentioned, uh, so if you would just have a look at them again, clarity and understanding and executing movement, ability to improvise, ability to perform, ability to work with concentration and incorporate feedback. So all of those things, there's nothing there that says that you need to be good in a specific technique. 
then of course, you know, uh, having only trained a certain technique might mean that the that uh, some of the materials that we are asking you to do in the audition, if they're very new to you, it might then be difficult to to meet those criteria if if the material is or the style or technique is very new. But there is not like a yeah, there is nothing that says that uh, someone who's only been uh, training house and hip hop techniques would not be able to meet those criteria. Could you clarify the tuition fees for EU students? Is there an age limit for the admission? Two questions. Two questions. So, uh, question about age limit? No, there is no age limit uh, to the admission. Uh, about um, the uh, tuition fee for Euro uh, European uh, um, citizens, there is no tuition fee. Uh, there is only a registration fee that one pays when one starts the education, but it, uh, the education doesn't cost anything. Will there be a less likely opportunity to be accepted as a student if you have injuries from earlier? So the question is if it's less likely to be accepted as a student if one has injuries from earlier. It all depends on the um, the, the um, where you are at. I mean, I think here also is uh, one of those points here, the sele selection criteria here when I said readiness to assimilate the program. Uh, one needs to be able to handle a full-time education with a lot of physical training. Uh, if a previous injury means that one cannot, uh, then yes, it's a, it's a problem. But uh, having had an injury is not uh, a lot of people, you know, t take themselves through injuries, and it's it's that also can happen sometimes during the education that someone gets injured, and we 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 work as we can with it. So uh, it is not necessarily a problem, but of course it could be a problem if it means that you're not able to to meet the studies in full time. And I think this is the last. Mm -hmm. Will there be possibility for apprenticeships at companies during this education? So the question is uh, with um, apprenticeships in companies. Uh, there are no uh, deals made already that guarantee uh, apprenticeships during the education. That being said, uh, and also as when I went through the curricula, as you noticed, there was not a place where it said uh, um, apprenticeship. So uh, there is not a specific, specific place for it in the curricula, and it's not something that we can guarantee all the students. That being said, uh, there has been a lot of apprenticeship happening. Uh, and uh, so uh, we have had um, uh, more sort of organized apprenticeships uh, with uh, DDT, Danish Dance Theatre, uh, I'm pointing this way because that's where they are at. And then I'm, I'm pointing that way with uh, Corpus, that was a company that was housed in the, in the um, uh, Royal Theatre before, uh, but uh, it doesn't exist anymore, but we then had uh, apprenticeships with them as well. Outside of that, there has also been individual apprenticeships made. So we've had students that had, for example, have been at the... Skånes uh, Dance Theater, the rap company in, in Malmö, um, or uh, yeah, a few other places short that, that also come from the student uh, themselves, that they found a possibility that they want to join a project for a certain while, and then we work with it, uh, if it's possible. So uh, there's space for apprenticeship, uh, but it's done, it's sort of negotiated on an individual level and it doesn't have a specific place in the uh, study plan. Was that the last question? All right, is there any other questions in the room? Yes. Uh, I have two questions from, from someone who's not here. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, for the audition video, the first task has to be in one shot or can you pick up? Uh, it, let's see the first one. I have to think. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it can be cut. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, we um, uh, because there are several different tasks that are being made. No, so if you want to, because uh, it it doesn't have to go all in one go. Okay. 
uh, it's perfectly fine if it, it's in one go, you know, because it also depends if people want to be or, or can edit and so. But the first one can, can have uh, breaks, yes. Okay. Another question? Mm -hmm. What kind of clothes uh, do, do, you want, do you prefer us to wear for the videos? So the question is if we're asking for any specific uh, um, dress code for the video, we don't. Uh, I mean, anything that uh, you think uh, uh, is best for us to be able to see what you're doing <laughs> and that you feel comfortable in, I would say. Yes? yes? About the auditions, can you repeat what steps that you possibly, possibly can get into? Like the first one, the videos, and then the second one? And uh, the yeah, so there are only two steps. Uh, yeah. Okay. So they're used, yeah. So they before before we had three, okay. uh, but now when we only did two, uh, we sort of took the second and put some of it in first and some of it in third. So there are only two steps. So the first round is done only on video, and then the second round is in uh, hostable physically. Yeah. Three days. Three days. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell a little about how. Uh, week schedule looks like? Sure, so the question, uh, just for uh, so that it gets on the mic as well, what a, a regular week looks like. So, um, in uh, what we have right now, there might be some, uh, uh, some changes to that. And, um, but the most typical week is that uh, there are two classes before lunch, you start at nine in the morning uh, with an hour and a half class, a little break, and then an hour class that is usually one hour and 45. So one that is a little bit longer than the other one. Uh, we do that uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So four days of the week, there are two classes before lunch. Wednesday, we usually only have one class before lunch and we make it longer instead. So we have a kind of a 9.30 till 11.30 class. Uh, and that's also because usually uh, we would then, after that class, gather all the students, like when we have also, because here at the campus there is also, or at the dance department, there are also two MA programs. So it was like a gathering, a Wednesday gathering, where we have time to talk things through and so on. So there was a, there is a scheduled sort of half hour for meeting with everyone. Um, and then the afternoon would be more of a workshop uh, four hour chunk. So there would be an hour uh, lunch between 12.30 and 1.30 and then we would go until uh, from 1.30 till 5.30 with a sort of work, four hours workshop. Now that can then uh, vary some, uh, you know, like a lot of times it's guest teachers that come in for one week or two. Uh, it can be quite physical work, but it could also be much less physical work. It can be something much more explorative or so it's not necessarily, you know, like all those uh, seven hours uh, fully dancing, but still it's, a, it's quite a long day. Uh, now that's the most regular week. It's not every week like that. Uh, also because we are trying sometimes to, to not get caught in the same uh, machinery. So that sometimes, uh, for example, we would have a, a class in the afternoon also, like a shorter class, a regular time, an hour and a half, two hours, and then have something else like a lecture or reading time. Or, um, so we do try every semester to, at some moment, uh, shuffle a little bit to create a little bit of a different rhythm. Then, of course, there is like, uh, this is when we're in the subject modules. When we're in these uh, performance productions and so, it looks quite different. So especially for the production, uh, depending a little bit on who's the choreographer coming and how they work, uh, sometimes the, you just have one, the full day, the full week with the choreographer. So there is not like a class from someone else. But that also depends a little bit on the nature of the work. Some also prefer that the, there's first a class by someone else and then they work. Uh, so it depends if the choreographer is interested in incorporating class as a part of their process or not. But sometimes that means that they can have, um, the students can have like five weeks 
that they're only working with this one person <laughs> the, the full day. Uh, but that uh, it depends a little bit. And then we have the individual projects and these other more the subject related uh, uh, studies and so. And there, of course, it doesn't necessarily follow because that's kind of based on, you know, the, the regular sort of time of a dance class, an hour to two hours, an hour and a half to two hours. No? So sometimes when the work looks, uh, when it's other kind of work, it also means that it's another kind of schedule. But as a rough idea, that's it. How about the, like, the, now we have this live music mm -hmm. and then mirrors? Mm -hmm. Because it's like most of the time rooms without mirrors, so it depends. Yeah, so uh, the question about live music and, what the, and mirrors in the room. So there are no mirrors in this space. There are mirrors in the studio, other studio behind us here. There is a mirrors on one side of the, of the studio, but there is also a curtain. Uh, so they're not always there, depending on uh, what the how the teacher wants to uh, work. We do have uh, mobile mirrors that can be moved in here if for some reason, but uh, usually if there's a teacher who wants to work with the mirrors, they would, uh, we would make sure that they have them in that room. And of course, in this space, it's also like you can see you're sitting in the audience seat. This is used for performances. And uh, so uh, it's also not to have like uh, mirrors on the walls here. And about live music, you also asked. Uh, also, depending a little bit on the teachers, um, if they are, if they prefer or not. So we do have uh, live music to to some, but not always. Was there a question there? Uh, three more questions. Mm -hmm. Do you have cooperation with other schools? So if we have cooperations with other schools, there, is not, uh, there are possibilities uh, and there are you know, occasional projects. It's not that it's um, set that we're always collaborating with other schools, but there, has, uh, there have been collaborations happening in, in the past. And there's a plan for music school now. Yes. So uh, in the, as we will be sharing the campus there in Hostobo with the, the, academy, the music academy, there is definitely uh, uh, interests from both sides there to, to collaborate as well. Uh, follow up on the apprenticeship. Does the apprenticeship have to be during three years? Uh, that depends actually a little bit on uh, what kind of apprenticeship it is. Uh, there are, uh, I mean, once you have finished your education in our school, we cannot provide an apprenticeship somewhere else. Then there are some places that have apprenticeships that uh, are interested in receiving recent graduates. But that's, um, then it's not anymore a part of our education because they've finished our education. There are also possibilities for this uh, Erasmus uh, uh, called recent graduate that are apprenticeships that you apply for. And you apply for them through our school, but they happen after the school. And we are not the ones who grant it. It's the local Erasmus offices that grant it. So it comes through the school because you get it because you are a recent graduate of the school. You couldn't get it if you were not a recent graduate, but it's not us providing them, if that makes sense. Was there more? Mm -hmm. Do you know the possible dates for the second round of auditions? Yes. And uh, you will find all of that information uh, online. I'm not sure if I have, if I remember right. Yeah, I have it here. 16th to 18th of May. But uh, yeah, it's all in the application guidelines. Could you possibly clarify how much is the registration fee? Yes, I can. It's a, I'm reading it out loud from the application guide. And it says, oh, you are, but that's maybe different. Registration fee for the school. Actually, that one I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure you can find it on our website. The application fee for the auditions is 600 uh, Danish crowns, but the registration for the school, I don't remember it now. It's not huge. It's to cover uh, sort of expenses for copies and, and these kind of things, but I, 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 you can find the information online. I don't have the exact number here. Does the education have Swedish CSN available to it? Uh, yeah, so question about if you can get Swedish CSN, which is study support. Yes, we have had Swedish students getting that here. 
I think that there's, a, as far as I understand, there's an agreement between Nordic countries that uh, your, your, your uh, national study support can be used also in another Nordic country. Is it possible to get information about the studio, studios in Holstebro? Is, are there pictures? So, uh, a question about the studios in Holstebro. So, the temporary location uh, is, uh, the thing is that uh, we don't want to uh, show anything of it because we still, uh, we are waiting for the last details before signing the contracts and it feels uh, wrong to uh, present the place before the contract is signed. There, we can definitely do that as soon as, uh, as soon as it has been signed, we can share pictures of the, uh, the location so people can get an understanding. Uh, of the new building, there is uh, obviously not pictures and we're in the process now of, of finding out what that new building is, is going to look like. Uh, and it's quite a lengthy process with workshops and so together also with the Royal Academy of Music to see the needs, what spaces can we share, what... So uh, there, are still, uh, there is still no um, drawings of the coming building. And of the temporary building, we will present it as soon as we are, we've signed the contract. How many students are accepted to the school? So to the program now uh, in Holstebro, we have written 10 to 14. So it's not an, it has never been an exact number. Uh, uh, so I remember when I started working here, there was uh, all the way up to 18 uh, students in one group. Uh, then we were making plays for also MA students when we were starting the MA programs, which meant that we went down a little bit in the number in, in BA. Uh, so now we have been uh, between uh, 14 and 16 in the last uh, uh, auditions. No, or 12 to 14. Uh, and then uh, here, uh, we have said 10 to 14 because um, uh, it's also depending on uh, the locations that we are uh, planning on being in, in uh, Holstebro, um, we'll only be able to house uh, one year group. And therefore, the original plan was to make a group out of 10. But if we cannot uh, uh, immediately have auditions for another year group, uh, we were thinking that then it's better to take a bigger year group uh, in this first round. So to create the possibility for that, we said that we will end up somewhere between 10 and 14. We started thinking that we should take 10, but we want to have the possibility of also creating a bigger group. Uh, so 10 to 14, short answer. Can you describe what the typical graduates in the program would look like? Dance like, think like? No. <laughs> No, I can't. The, I cannot describe typically what a graduate would, uh, looks like. They are, they are quite different, uh, which I think also is a quality of the program. We're not aiming to, to do this and to bring a very diverse crowd and streamline them into a certain kind of dancer. Uh, we want to start pretty broad and we try to remain pretty broad. It cannot be everything. There is a profile. There is something we're doing and there are some things that we're not doing. So I'm not pretending that every, there's place for everything. Of course, there is some kind of selection, but there is an interest in that selection that there are different interests because I think it's also much more interesting for a student to be in that environment where there are differences because it also helps you to understand your place. Uh, so... Uh, we're not aiming for a specific way of moving or a specific way of thinking. Uh, if anything, you know, uh, I would say, you know, when I said this admission criteria that we were proud about was, was this, uh, uh, the capacity to engage in complexity. Was that how it was? Re uh, paraphrasing, willingness and capacity to engage in complexity. I think that's a good... <laughs> If I would ex describe something, I would uh, describe that. And then that can look like a lot of different things. Are there more? Last one. Mm -hmm. Can you tell something about accommodation for students? Thanks. Ah, uh, no, I cannot. Uh, we are not uh, 
here in, we don't have a place for the students to stay in any of the campuses um, uh, in, around, that we have around in Denmark. So it's not something we provide. Uh, I know uh, that the, the Holstebro uh, commune is uh, aware of that we are starting programs and that, that there are uh, you know, places for students to, to live there and there is organization around it. But it's not something that the school uh, organizes for the students. And once again, it's not specific for Holstebro, but it's like that in all the campuses. All right, are there any more questions in the room? Yes. I'm just a little confused about how, uh, how big a difference there will be between the school in Copenhagen and Holstebro. Yeah. Like the projects they're doing in the curriculum. And the well, the curriculum is the same, okay. you know? So uh, the, what the curriculum that I describe now is, is the same. Then, like I said, uh, these larger uh, categories of dance body movement, you know, can be interpreted in different ways in different places. Uh, there will be a head of program in Hostobo, the position that is uh, open. Actually, it has a deadline for application today. Um, so there is, of course, a person coming in who will also be part of, of shaping that, you know. So... Uh, I, in that sense, I don't want to say too much about it because it's also up to the head of program to see. But of course, the sort of the overall mentality and um, perspectives that I'm describing now goes for both. You know, uh, whether it's about uh, a sort of more general overview of this relation between dance and choreography, or uh, the the specificity to a technique or more to like a more general understanding of skills. So that goes for both educations. So then how exactly that's going to play out, uh, we, we will see, you know. The idea is not that they're going to be, like I said, they're, they're two, two versions of the same, or two, what should I call them, uh, editions of the same uh, study plan. So, uh, like I said, uh, we have built up a certain uh, um, edition of this study plan here in Copenhagen, and we are now building another one uh, in Hostobo. If all, like I, I took that example before, but just as a metaphor, if all of this, uh, uh, or maybe not even all, if me, uh, who was the head of the program here, if I would quit and someone else comes in and still has the same curriculum, might make a very different education than the one we have now. You know? so, uh, and that person wouldn't be doing anything wrong because they would still be doing their interpretation of that study plan. So we have now uh, this edition in relation to the people that are here and are working here. And we will now then sort of expand into having one more edition and it will be with this overall understanding of the relationship between dance and choreography and these skills that we are mentioned. And like I said, the, the admission criteria are the same. You know? So uh, the only, the only uh, way that I would like to describe the difference right now is this difference in focus between, and not so much between the content, but maybe more of like a student where they see themselves. So not so much thinking that this, if you go to this program, you will become that. Or if you go to this program, but more like, okay, I'm interested in dancing in this way. And then I think maybe that education suits me best. So it's more a choice of, of uh, the, the applicant than what the program is trying to convince someone to do. And I think you could go into a program with one idea and then end up working in a very different way. You know, that happens in the program we have here as well. So I don't want to insist too much on the difference, both because it depends on, on how we're, the, the, the campus will be constructed in, with the new staff and our collaboration, but also because uh, there should be some openness in it as well. Yes. 
So like they know about the process of the group, they know about the process of the students through right. the three years. Yeah. So uh, good question. So uh, the, the sort of how the um, teaching body, teacher's body is, is built up. There are sort of different um, uh, rings. Uh, yeah. So the closest one is, of course, the faculty, like the people who are employed at the school. Um, so uh, in our case, for the, um, for the BA program, there is a core team, which is uh, uh, next to myself is Tiziana Fracciola here and, and Malin Astner. The three of us are sort of the, uh, the core team of the BA. We also have a, a Kim Bigas, who's uh, teaching both at the BA and at the MA in choreography. Um, and uh, um, Laura Nandru Blackbird, who is head of education for the MA program in dance and participation. So that's, uh, Laura has a, a specific uh, task there. So we are the ones that follow the students, uh, that teach continuously throughout the three years, and you know, who see the students throughout all the other uh, uh, classes of other people as well. Then we have some frequent guest teachers that uh, also the students know, okay, I'm meeting this teacher you know, every semester throughout my education, although they're only sort of coming in by hours, but it's someone that will be returning. Um, and then that can be some of them returning every semester, maybe some of them only twice during the education, um, depending also on their availabilities and so on. And then we have some who are just uh, one-off, you know, like we, we think like, ah, oh, wouldn't it be great if they could get a workshop with this? Uh, so it might be some specific input to something, but you'll meet it for a week and then you might not meet it again. So we have these sort of different uh, levels. Mm -hmm. And that would definitely be, be similar also in Hostable. Do you have an open house live stream at some point? Uh, no, because we did already uh, have an open house in uh, October, and it's a yearly uh, open house uh, that at the school. Uh, so that one took place already. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm? Which kind of uh, documents do you require? require? Documents. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the rules here is that if we find it necessary, we can ask someone to pass it. So uh, it's not a document that you need to provide already in the application, but uh, sometimes if we are, you know, during the auditions or so, we are worried that the student will have uh, uh, difficulties in, in uh, and it has to re relate to this admission criteria of readiness to assimilate the program. So if there is language skills that get in the way for you know, uh, receiving the teaching in a proper way, then it's a problem. And then we can ask to, to get some kind of documented skill. But it's not something we ask to send in. I think you can find the information there and um, uh, whatever needs to be sent in as part of personal information in the application form. So once you're on the on, online there, you'll see everything that needs to be provided. All right. Uh, hmm? Yes, sure. Uh, do you have like an internship uh, abroad during the program? Not, um, again, it's not something that is uh, guaranteed, but of course we are, you know, one of the uh, ideas of becoming a bachelor is to be, uh, you know, to create this mobility, uh, especially between the European countries, but not only. So uh, when it comes to this uh, Erasmus uh, uh, possibilities, there's a lot of our students who go on exchange to other schools, and sometimes also like a, an in internship to some place uh, also abroad. So it's, it's possible, but it's not uh, specified, you know, in the study plan. Okay, anything else? No? All right, well then, uh, thanks for coming. 
and also thanks for the ones watching uh, it online and hopefully for people who are looking at this afterwards uh, all the you provided a quite a good range of questions and i hope mm -hmm. so even if they cannot ask them live there still uh, it's like a good chunk of frequently asked questions here okay thank you very much